Okay, so we got the Trans Am up on ramps today. Hi, Chester. How you doing? Okay, go ahead. Um, went and took it for a ride yesterday. Uh, started misfiring pretty bad. Um, then it backfired really loud in a uh, gas station parking lot. And so I came home and uh, started inspecting stuff. And uh, some of the plug wires actually had cracks in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the plug wires and plugs in it. I pulled one plug already and it was black. So I'm gonna replace those. Hopefully that alleviates the issue. I mean, they look pretty old already. So I replaced the ICM already uh, with another known good GM one. Um, it still did it. So it wasn't the ICM. So it's gotta be a misfire, like a plug or something. And it could be just shorting out you know, going back to the distributor and stuff, and this causing all kinds of havoc. So, uh, let me get under this thing and uh, start ripping it apart. Uh, I know a lot of guys complain about doing plugs and wires on these things. Um, they're fairly simple if you just get them on ramps and get underneath it. Uh, here's that first one I pulled out, front driver's side. It's pretty black. But everything's pretty accessible if you don't have an air pump or anything on it. Um, the passenger side's a little different story in the wires I think if you just take this belt off right here and probably the tensor it'd probably be okay it, it's not that hard to do but just routing those wires is uh, pretty important so I'm gonna get to this real quick uh, I'm gonna bust this all out oh, look at the MSD distributor on it cool um, but yeah everything's pretty accessible from underneath um, some of the plugs I think you can get to them from over here. They don't look too bad. It's just time consuming, nothing crazy. Just take your time. And then uh, have a set of ramps is uh, the biggest one, <laughs> or jack stands. But yeah, let me get to this uh, real quick and uh, get the show on the road. Uh, so I just pulled out this first one right here and I'll show you what I was talking about right here. Uh, big old hole in it right there. And it's causing all kinds of havoc. So I'm sure the rest of them are like that too. But yeah, let me get all these uh, swapped out. It's always good to get under your car every once in a while too. I didn't even notice this before. See a little wetness right here. I thought it was oil. It's not, it's coolant. So the weep hole is leaking on the uh, water pump. And I saw, I saw some right, yeah, there you go, right there. Took that tensioner off. So I'm gonna inform the customer. We're gonna be doing a water pump on this thing too. Not that big of a deal, pretty easy. Again, uh, it's like three uh, 14 millimeter bolts. Um, you just take this fan out, this fan comes right out, real easy to do, just time consuming. All right, so I got all the plug wires out. Uh, I'm working on the uh, passenger side right now. The driver side's installed. Um, I think that's probably the problem. <laughs> I'm gonna try to find some heat sh uh, shielding for these. I I put some on mine, on my personal vehicle, and it actually works really well. But I've seen it before. Just the header it, uh, sits a little too close to that boot. Really, nothing you can do about it, unless you just don't run headers. First doesn't look okay, but I think that was probably the major one right there, but they are kind of old. Um, I did find a water pump leak. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the water pump too. Uh, I got O'Reilly, they ordered one. They'll be here at about one. It's about 11 right now, so no big deal. Give me some time to sort all this stuff out. And uh, let me show you under here. I found my flashlight. Got my daughter playing out here. <laughs> Uh, if you take that, that tensioner off right there, you get all kinds of room, but they had them routed uh, right here, which that's not the correct way. It actually is supposed to go that way, which it actually looks like it's missing uh, the thing, uh, the little stock, the stock holder that goes on the accessory bracket. So I think I am going to run them the way they had them right there and just kind of clean it up a little bit. 
but it, it didn't look like it was rubbing or anything. It's kind of a seemed like it was kind of a smart way to do it. But uh, I'll see. Uh, it looks like this belt's kind of missing a groove there. I wonder if that hub is off center or something. I'll look at it later. But yeah, all the new ones are on there. Got them nice and water tucked. I'm going to tuck in a little bit more back there. I think I'm going to get a zip tie and go that way with it a little bit. But uh, it's going along. All the plugs still look black. They had some iridiums in there and then some AC Delco regulars and they had some AC Delco uh, platinums in there. So they are kind of a mismatch hodgepodge kind of deal going on. So I don't see a tranny leak really. I think it was probably just from it sitting. But I'm, I see it kind of wet back there, but it's not really major. Uh, I am going to double check it though just to make sure. Because I don't want it slipping or losing fluid or anything. So I am going to double check that. Uh, it might be the pan gasket. Hopefully it is. It doesn't look like it's coming from the top. It looks like it's coming from the pan right there. So I know when transmissions sit a while, um, they start weeping a little bit. So I know this car sat for a little while. But uh, I'll go ahead and double check all that too. So uh, let me finish up these plug wires and stuff. All right. Well. Got all the plugs changed, and then, yeah, you can see they're filed. It's got a couple AC Delcos, a couple NGK Iridiums, you know, this random hodgepodge stuff. Uh, some of these wires broke. Uh, one of them was completely burnt through. Yeah, right there. So I put um, some of this DEI heat shield stuff on this one right here on the front, and then this middle one back here. This is the one that was actually burnt out pretty good. Um, the rest of them actually looked okay. Um, and then on that side, I, just, I moved them out of the way and kind of, I got them out. It's fine. So, changed the oil in it, put the filter in it. Uh, I'm going to fire it up here in a second. All right. So, I got a, it's run on all eight now. So, that's good. I got the wide band hooked up. I'm going to connect to it. I just died for no reason, I guess. So. I don't think I ever fully uh, tuned the uh, cold start stuff on this stuff, uh, this car, so we'll see what it does. Okay, what's the temperature? Yeah, let's see. Average values. Okay, 75 degrees. Okay, so yeah, let me get this thing warmed up. Uh, let me want to double check everything before it actually take off, and then um, we'll go see what it's actually doing. It feels like it's running a ton better right now, so uh, I guess that helps when you're running on all eight cylinders. Oh yeah, it sounds mean. So yeah, we're gonna get this thing uh, dialed in now, finally. So um, yeah, let me get it warmed up, and then uh, we'll go for a ride. Okay, so I got it, um, got it all warmed up. I'm flashing it back to uh, speed density mode. Um, I, it was running really good. It wasn't it missing or anything. It was revving really good. Uh, so I'm turning the O2 sensors back on. Um, I'm putting it back in speed density mode. And I'm going to double check all these VE tables and stuff. Let me turn this key off. Um, those uh, those spark plug wires, they will, uh, they'll sometimes melt. And then um, they'll touch against the header. And then it'll cause misfires like really bad. Um, it'll actually short out, you know, sort of, and it'll kind of send voltage back to that, uh, the, the distributor and just cause havoc. Uh, it'll spread spark everywhere. So just word of the wise. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, tune in speed density mode again on this car. I'm just going to double check everything. Um, I got the wide band hooked up. Um, got my cables and stuff. I got some gas. I uh, got the oil change and everything. I thought we're ready to hit the road here. Uh, I might stop by the car wash and wash this thing. This thing is disgusting. I can't even see out of the windows. So, um, you know me. I can't stand to drop a dirty car, especially with bird shit on it. So, we're going to go ahead and go to the car wash real quick. Wash this thing up. And then we're going to go for a ride and start tuning. All right. I got her all, got her all cleaned up. And uh, just as usual, they got leak. <laughs> so, uh yeah, <laughs> we're going to go, go team this thing, so, I don't know why they leak, they just leak. Good design, GM. Okay, so, 
Okay. All right, let's, let's get the show on the road. I think uh, every time I tune an LT1, I'm gonna bring an extra ICM with me. Uh, I'm pretty sure the this ICM just took a shit. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, just flashing it. I just pulled over to the side of the road, I'm in the middle of nowhere pretty much, and uh, I flashed it, I started it, ran pretty good, and all of a sudden died. So I'm gonna try to start it up and nothing. So I'm pretty sure the ICM took a shit. So I'm gonna have to wait to cool it down. And then, you know, this car did this to me the last time I tuned it. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on with it, but I got an extra one at the home and uh, I'm gonna put it in there and then try to break down again, I guess. That'd be nice. So yeah, I'm just currently uh, sitting on the side of the road watching traffic go by and uh, letting this thing cool down. Let's see if it'll start up again. No. Yeah, that's what's wrong with it. Word of the wise, uh, just bring an extra ICM with you everywhere. Uh, quarter inch ratchet and a five and a half millimeter socket that's all you need and then you can swap it out on the side of the road we figured i'd learn my lesson though but I, no I, I didn't so uh i remembered last time I, it actually it left me on the side of the road it was actually the icm i just found the old one in the back now that it's nice and cool it fired right up so I'm gonna try to haul ass home and then swap this ICM out. So I got two bad ICMs and uh Yeah, we're gonna try to try to make it home. So I made it and it uh, actually died right in the driveway. So, awesome. All right. so we get to, and it looks like the package came too and hopefully it's the tachometer converter. So I can actually fix that too. Anyway, let me get this ICM swapped out and uh, we will go for another ride and hopefully not break down maybe. <laughs> this car hates me, I swear. Like it really does. Um, it's a really nice car, but it just hates me. So, yeah, let's get this ICM swapped out again. All right, so um, I'm headed back to the house. I'm in Trailblazer. 
Uh, I went to go get another ICM out of my little stash bin and it's bad. So I'm just gonna throw all the old ones away now. Uh, I've got uh, an O'Reilly one with a lifetime warranty, so that's good, I guess. Um, so yeah, I made it home anyway, and then I just went to go start the Trailblazer and it just clicked. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, cars hate me today. So uh, it was just a loose terminal, <laughs> so I decided to tighten it up. Now I'm just headed back and I gotta replace this ICM. And I got the tachometer working too, uh, off camera. Uh, I had to mess with some settings on that little um, little tachometer uh, adapter thing. Uh, pretty neat little doodad. Uh, but I'm almost home. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's finally get this thing running and driving decently and then let's go tune it because I'm I'm done I'm done with it <laughs> uh, I'm totally done with this car so uh hopefully it fixes it though uh I still need to get the water pump for it I didn't I didn't put the water pump on I'm just kind of done with it today I might, I'll, probably, I'll just do that next weekend I'm sure I'm gonna have this car not a big deal um but I think when I pull the water pump off too, I'm gonna pull that cap and rotor off and actually make them double check everything on the side of it. Cause even with the 0411 swap, it still retains the Opti, but it only uses a distributor. So um, I'm going to just check, you know, just, just like you do like an HEI system. You just, you just check the cap and rotor on it and uh, see if there's any carbon tracing or anything like that. So um, let's get this thing taken care of. I see him in. Brought an extra one just in case. <laughs> you know, I really and truly do think that this car hates me. Like it just seriously died again. So I'm just coasting. thing for a minute i uh got a new icm in it uh and died on me well it did going around the neighborhood but um swapped the injectors out uh to some 24s that i have um didn't improve anything uh so something's definitely going on with this car like it is messed up bad um it's either um the fuel filter's clogged, the the pump ain't putting on enough fuel pressure. Uh, I mean, I had to give fuel pressure when I was idling earlier. Uh, I, I checked that. Uh, either the the regulator's ruptured, something something's going on with this thing. Um, so, kind of at a loss with this one. Um, I'm gonna sleep on it, so. It's kind of pointless just to throw parts at it, so uh, yeah. Not sure what's going on with it, but hey, on a positive note, I got the tack working. Uh, didn't really leave me stranded, stranded, but it did, I guess. Um, it's got like some high uh, pulse width going on at idle and stuff, so I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent certain what's going on with it. Um, that's for the injectors, the pulse width. Um, 
I really, I, I, I don't know what's going on with it. I'm really stumbled with it. So it's got fresh plugs, wires. The only thing I haven't checked was the cap and rotor yet. Um, you know, and that could be an issue too. Uh, I think when I get that water pump off next weekend, um, I'm, I'm, I am going to take that uh, that cap and rotor off too. So it ain't nothing. Just take that crank pulley off and then bust that cap and rotor off. Um, but I think that's going to be it for this one. Uh, really zero progress as far as anything goes. Um, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. So yeah you will see this car again <laughs> next weekend probably so uh yeah there's that anyway uh thanks for watching if you like what you see hit that like button if you don't like what you see hit that dislike button uh if you're not subscribed subscribed please subscribe uh, means a lot to me uh, i keep making these videos just uh for information purposes mainly and uh, it's going to be entertainment, I guess. It's going to be kind of entertaining if you're watching. <sighs> anyway, uh, I'm going to go inside, eat some dinner, hang out with my kids. Mm, yeah. See you guys.